to our celebration of the life of Grace Virginia Johnson Bird. Thank you for being here this morning to give our praise and thanks to God and to celebrate uh, the life of this saint. All of the scriptures that we will read today uh, have something to do with Grace and her life, so we're seeking to pay tribute to her through these scriptures. So I invite your hearing now to these words of comfort. The first one uh, comes to us from Mark's Gospel. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and bless them. And from John's Gospel, the 14th chapter, these words of Jesus as he bids farewell to his disciples and seeks to offer them strength and comfort. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go prepare a place for you? I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. But Thomas, not surprisingly, said to him, We do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. May God bless the reading of his word. Now also, in acknowledging our grace's faith, uh, and it's appropriate when Christians gather, especially in times like this, that we affirm our faith together. So we're going to ask you this morning if you would take your bulletin and stand together and let's affirm the Apostles' Creed. In faith we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Friends, we have gathered here to praise God and to give thanks and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of grace. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow hope, and in death resurrection. I invite us to pray together. Will you bow with me? Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially, we praise you for grace, whom you have graciously received into your presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them. And help us so to believe that where we have not seen, that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen.
disciples came out urged and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Our second reading from Philippians 3, verses 17 through 21. Paul writes, Brothers and sisters, join in imitating me, and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of His glory, by the power that also enables Him to make all things subject to Himself. And our final reading from 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 through 8. 
As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. This is the word of God, and it is for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> We are indeed gathered here to give our thanks and praise to God and to celebrate the life of a remarkable woman who impacted all of our lives in significant ways. We will dearly miss her. Grace loved this church deeply and all of its people as well as this unique and special community in which we lived. We will miss looking over for her and her well, I would say pew, uh, but she didn't say pew, she said bench, <laughs> sitting on her bench. We will miss looking over there to find her on her bench. We will miss greeting her at the door and perhaps hearing her say, not bad for an old lady. Uh, we will miss her smile and her sparkling blue eyes. We will miss seeing her under the carport as we walked by around the loop. She certainly lived up to, or shall I say lived into her name, Grace. All of us received grace through her. She was an extension of our Lord, and his love and peace. It is sort of an odd story, this little story, isn't it? This encounter that Jesus has with a Canaanite woman in Matthew 15. And of course, the Canaanites, as you well remember, were ancient enemies of Israel. We hear a lot about the Canaanites and battles with them in the Old Testament. The Israelites had conquered them centuries before upon entering the Promised Land. This woman pleads for help for her possessed daughter. And at first, Jesus ignores her. And then the disciples gang up on her. And the humiliation continues by asking Jesus to send her away. Here she stands, probably in tears and desperation. She is, however, determined to be helped, to be heard. And after some awkward silence, Jesus finally relents and says, I was sent by God to the lost sheep of Israel. Even this apparent insult will not deter this woman. And she throws herself at Jesus' feet and wraps her arms around his knees and pleads for her child. Jesus hurls another zinger. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. The children hear a reference to the Israelites and the dogs, the Canaanites. Still undaunted, the woman responds, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Finally, Jesus responds, Woman, great is your faith, and heals her child. Now to be perfectly honest and transparent, Jesus doesn't come off looking too good in this story. What are we to make of this odd encounter? We can find help in remembering that Matthew, like the other gospel writers, wrote his gospel for a particular audience. Matthew was writing primarily for Jewish people. So he wants them to look good. Canaanites are the dogs. We are the good guys. And Jesus is using this as a teaching moment. He's probably saying out loud what some of the others were thinking. These Canaanites. But once again, in dramatic fashion, <coughs> Jesus demonstrates incredible compassion. And he extends the boundaries and the borders of his kingdom to a 
include the dogs, the Canaanites. And I believe that Jesus was simply pushing this woman a little bit to teach us the kind of faith that we're supposed to have. And that it's possible for us through the grace of Jesus. Ultimately, this is a story of faith and healing. I don't know about you, but the woman in the story reminds me of someone. She is relentless. She's strong. She's shrewd. She's clever. And she's deeply faithful. She's not going to take no for an answer. When I picture this woman, it is not difficult for me to think of grace. Can't we imagine Jesus referring to our grace as a woman of great faith? <laughs> now, Grace's faith journey began as one of 11 siblings. She once recalled that her parents sometimes took the children to church, but she and her brothers and sisters <coughs> often walked two miles back and forth from Sunday school and church to home. It was like she was drawn to faith. She was drawn to the church. And the importance of Sunday school and church and living a life of service to Christ will become paramount in her life and in her family's life as well. We learned, she said, about Jesus. We learned about the Bible. We learned about God's love. Later, she and Roy would read Bible story books to the children around the table and they would say prayers together as a family. But her children would say that the greatest gift that she's ever given them, and she's given them lots of good things and lots of wonderful memories, was faith in Jesus. And that's quite a good thing for a child to be able to say about a parent. Grace attended Johnson Chapel Church until 1962 and then joined Four Oaks United Methodist Church in 1963. She was a faithful, dependable member in every way, she was active in the United Methodist Women and enjoyed doing crafts and quilting and teaching people how to quilt and baking cakes. And notice I said cakes, not cake. <laughs> baking cakes for the annual church bazaar. She also took her discipleship beyond the walls, beyond the four walls of the church, which we're all called to do. Jesus brings us here to teach us and equip us to go out there and do stuff for Him. And she did that with the Women's Legion Auxiliary supporting the fire department and our local rescue squad, among many other things. Grace and some of you will remember Goldie Denny. Grace and Goldie Denny made quite the formidable teaching team in our church. Goldie taught the kindergarten Sunday school class for 50 years. Now forgive me for saying this, Sometimes, you know, that preaching, meddling, pastoring thing still comes out. And sometimes it's hard for us to get somebody to fill in one Sunday a month. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. She taught our Jenna um, and was an important person in her faith development. I think Grace and people like Grace have had a lot to do with her continued love for Jesus and the church. And I'm so thankful for that. Through the years when Grace and I would visit, she would always inquire about Jenna and she would pray for her and want to know what she was doing. She loved anything that had to do with children. Playing games, teaching, reading. Now, Grace was not, uh, she was not a time out mama. You know, that was, that was later. So I'm not sure she was familiar with time out, but she was familiar with the uh, fly swatter. <laughs> And she knew how to use it, you know, and make it sting a little. So, you know, she was, she was a, a disciplined person and expected, expected discipline, which is a good thing. That's a gift to children, too, isn't it? Yeah. Like the woman in the story, I was always inspired by Grace's love for the Lord and the church and her deep faith, especially in difficult times. Life is never easy for any of us. And like Father Kavanaugh says in Jane Karen's Midford series, um, all of us find ourselves chewing on more than we can swallow sometimes, don't we? Life is tough. It's hard. And Grace experienced loss and pain and grief. Her beloved husband Roy passed away in, 20, in 2001. 
and she lost her son Roy Jr. or Randy to illness and then her son-in-law Cecil and of course uh, Precious Marie is still with us but, but it, you've grieved the loss of a number of brothers and sisters. And then there were the physical challenges, the knee replacement, the broken bones, shots in the eye which makes me squeamish just to think about it, a shot in the eye. And yet she went about those things as though they were just a part of her life, what she had to do. She always remained resolute and strong. And Jean recalls seeing her one night, late, three o'clock in the morning, hearing her voice, and the then she's up after Randy had died, and she's reading her scriptures, and she's praying, she's talking to the Lord. She would always say, God has a plan, he makes no mistakes, and we need to trust in him. Charles H. Spurgeon, a great preacher of yesteryear, once said, Oh, brothers, be great believers. Little faith will bring your souls to heaven, but great faith will bring heaven to you. Grace had that great faith that helped bring healing and strength and power to her spirit. That heaven that comes to us when we draw close to Christ on a regular basis. Grace was not only faithful, but she was fun too. Whether it was a monthly shopping trip to Belmont and Raleigh, or a visit to the music store for a French horn in Cameron Village, or a stopover at Kmart to search, have the children go and search for blue light specials. Remember blue light specials? <laughs> the little blue uh, police siren thing going around there. And then a lunch of uh, hoagies or belly sandwiches. Uh, and that day, uh, they were three for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> You can't even get a sesame seed at Jimmy John's. <laughs> she believed, uh, she loved the beach and she believed that the um, salty ocean, the ocean, the salt in the ocean water could cure just about anything. You know, and relied on that somewhat. Um, and her Sunday dinners that she started preparing really early in the week with the list on the refrigerator, what she was going to have, and all through Saturday, and those things were, were epic. Grace also had an amazing touch with flowers and gardens. She'd grown up farming and was familiar with the land and loved the land and all of its miracles of growth and provision. She did gardening probably for 92 of her 93 years of some dimension. She contributed lots of seeds and cuttings to neighbors' yards. She enjoyed seed day in March when she pulled out the totes that were filled with mason jars and medicine bottles and envelopes with their heritage seeds in them. She enjoyed sharing those seeds along with plants and flowers and vegetables with friends and neighbors. Lou walkers have enjoyed her yard and flower blossoms from spring until fall. Janice once said that Grace could plant a tobacco stick and grow tobacco. <laughs> Grace's gift and love of gardening reminds me of a, a poem I came across a few years ago. I, I'm actually saving this for, for my mother um, when that time comes. And because of her love, of her green hands instead of just green thumbs, and her love of plants and flowers and things, and, and grace in many ways was like a mother to me. So I want to just read this in honor of her and mothers who like gardening. This is by Polly Wilkerson Woodard. Where there are gardens, there are mothers. How much joy to discover in the planning and the planting from love, new love will grow. What we learn later by careful study to raise the choicest blooms shows of the unpremeditated touch of mothers moving away a stone, covering from frost, steadying to avert a fall. My mother was a gardener. Through the seasons, down the years, she understood the cultivation of deep-rooted friendship, sent tender vines and circling family from her heart, full of flowers through me to yours. It is twilight in her garden now. Soft golden glints of fragrance fill the fountains, inviting our return in ever-flowing memory her lovely, loving legacy. My mother was a gardener.
Grace bird, great was and is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. Which was to be with your Lord, to be with your departed loved ones, to join the great company of the church triumph. And may you and I, brothers and sisters, continue her great legacy of faith. May we grow something for Jesus in our hearts. I think uh, Amy and the young can come in and speak. <coughs>
first becoming popular, I was probably somewhere around 13 or 14 years old, and I received a, a digital camera for Christmas one morning. And so we went to eat lunch um, with the Johnson side of her family, and uh, when I when I saw her, you know, I excitedly ran to her. I said, "Grandma, look at my new digital camera." And she looked at it and kind of unamused. She said, "Well, that's nice." As long as you can afford to develop the film. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, some other important lessons from our grandmother um, was the importance of hard work and behaving. While we always had lots of fun, we also learned at Grandma and Granddaddy's house there was a time and a place to work hard and be on your best behavior. Uh, we spent many, many days and hours in the gardens of Grandma, planting, weeding, and harvesting. Uh, and she showed us the rewards of our hard work because she'd come in with the vegetables that we had picked and uh, prepare those for us. And I will never forget the taste of the fresh dug Irish potatoes or peas at Grandma's house. And she really instilled in both Adam and I that passion um, for gardening that we both carried into it. <laughs> in addition to the discipline of working hard, we were expected to be on our best behavior. And I'm sure many of you have heard one of her classic sayings, you have to make children mind. And um, that's definitely something she did with us. <laughs> Grandma also taught us about caring for others and loving them and the way she celebrated birthdays. She loved birthdays. She had the best memory of anyone I know remembering everybody's birthday um, and she sent so many cards to friends and families hundreds of cards through the years um, she also loved our family joke of putting trick candles on the birthday cakes <laughs> and she was the one when they were blown out that was over there flowing just a little bit to get those candles to relight and she always got a lot of joy out of that um, and then speaking of birthday cakes, Grandma was also our family birthday <coughs> cake baker. Every year she made each of us our favorite cake, what, whatever we wanted. Uh, one of my favorites was the yellow cake with chocolate frosting, and she made some good ones. But we'll let, you tell you, let Adam tell you about his. My favorite was her carrot cake, and I would say she's famous for that. <laughs> um, you will not find carrot cake better than that anyway. And to my knowledge, and that was a secret recipe, to my knowledge, the only person who's ever gotten a writ written copy of that recipe is Amy. <laughs> I'm going to need you to make one. I feel really honored that my husband has on water um, for his birthday later. Um, and later. Uh, so we have so many memories of our grandma, uh, but what I hope we and all of you remember about her the most is, is her, her love for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Grandma lived uh, her life as God's faithful servant, and I praise God that she is now in His presence.
when we think about God's grace, we think about how freely, irrationally, lavishly God pours out His grace on us all. And when I think about this grace, I think about the countless ways that she lavishly gave uh, all of her life in, in countless ways. Her family, the love that she gave to, to you and to all of us, uh, the vegetables and seeds from the garden, the countless meals that she has cooked, uh, just so many ways, so, so much of a legacy that we have all benefited from. Uh, last night, uh, as I was praying with my little girl when we went to bed, uh, I always pray a little bit and then I ask her, what is she thankful for? And she said, thank you for Miss Grace. Uh, she is only two and a half, uh, so the only thing she knows of Miss Grace is, is walking around the loop and, and seeing her from the stroller. But uh, her legacy even extends uh, to the very next generation. Thanks be to God for that. And last night, for those of us who, who live in the area, we had a, a pretty tough storm come through. Uh, and after the storm came over, there was a beautiful rainbow over town. And I thought, how fitting that Miss Grace gave us a rainbow uh, over town to remember her by and give thanks for. As Joey mentioned, one of the other ways uh, for many years that she, she gave of herself and, and the love she had for God was to the children of this church. Uh, so many folks have come through the doors of this church and grown up in this church that were taught by her. So it will be fitting that as we recess uh, here in a moment after the benediction, Laura is going to sing, Jesus Loves Me. So as we go, uh, Miss Grace would remind us all, Jesus does love you and call you to give and love those uh, in your midst as well. Let us bow for you. God, we give you thanks for the life of Miss Grace, a true saint among us who lived faithfully, humbly, compassionately, a life full of love and joy for you and for all people. As we go, Lord, may we cherish her memory, may we be inspired by the countless things she has taught us, and most of all, may we love you and our neighbors just as she has. Thank you, Lord, for grace and the ways that she has loved us well. We pray this in the name of Jesus.